Dove presents Body and Mind Season 4. This is Ashwarya Ajit. While the whole city is gripped with the fever of the Dubai Fitness Challenge, I'm going to take on that spirit and crush it at the gym. Although today we're not doing anything too crazy or over the top, we're kicking it with some good old squats, planks and push-ups, which never seem to get easy by the way. So let's get started. Today I'm at Fitness 360 and my challenger is Kimberly D'Souza, popular food blogger. I'm sure most of you know her from Where My Food At, which is her Instagram handle. Hi, Kimberly. Hi, Ashwarya. Thank you so much for having me. You're looking radiant even at the gym. I don't know how it's possible, but you can make it work. Look who's talking. I'm so excited to see you. And Likewise. it feels a bit weird because I'm seeing you in a place outside of a restaurant, which is very unusual because we're always eating, right? I know, eating, I right? know. Yeah, I'm always <laughs> eating, but it's so weird to be at the gym. Yeah. But Surprisingly enough, I'm always at the gym. So. Really? Yeah. yeah, I know you're really into fitness and especially yeah. with the whole Dubai Fitness Challenge going on at the yeah, moment, yeah. it's important to keep fit. Now, Kimberly, I know that you're a food blogger. I've mentioned that at least five times in the last yeah. two minutes. <laughs> um, but a lot of people think, and you're also into fitness, a lot of people think that food and fitness don't go hand in hand. What's mm -hmm. your take on that? Well, according to me, food and fitness is a match made in heaven because I can do what I love, I can eat and I can monetize out of it and at the same time I can go to the gym, burn up all those calories and not let all that food I eat affect my body. It helps me keep my zen and that's what's so important to me. So I think fitness is something that is irrelevant when you are in a foodie business. All right, so today you know that you're going to challenge me on yes, season am, four of the show. <laughs> We'll be undergoing five challenges. Okay. Are you ready? I am. <laughs> I am a bit ready. I mean, I'm looking at you. You seem so perfect oh. in what you're doing. I am slightly intimidated, but I'm ready to do this Kimberly, with you. Kimberly, what about me <laughs> intimidates you for a fitness let's challenge? Let's see, let's see, because you mind. seem to be knowing your stuff, so. Well, yeah. you know, the proof <laughs> is in the pudding. Quite literally, you're a food blogger. You should get the pun. All right, awesome. let's do let's this. Let's get this going. <laughs> Alright guys, so before the games officially begin, I need to introduce you to the fitness director of Fitness360, Ehab. Hi Ehab. Hi, how are you? So you're going to be our instructor slash coach slash judge throughout this entire yes. challenge, correct? Yes, hopefully okay. you're ready. Yes, absolutely. So the first challenge that we'll be attempting today is the rowing challenge. How many meters are we covering? Yes, uh, first we'll come to Fitness360. Thank you. And uh, we'll do five, five challenges. We'll start with the rowing challenge. We'll do 200 meters. We'll do it on time base. So who will be faster will be the winner. How long will it take to do 200? Uh, almost like one minute. Mi minute, okay. Uh, as if you're strong, I don't know. Let's right. see. <laughs> and it's good we're starting with rowing because it's also a bit of a warm yes, up to the rest of the. Yes, we warm up. Yeah. The rowing is good for warm up. It uh, improves your cardiovascular and it strengthens your upper part, upper muscles, and legs. All right. Good luck, Kimberly. Are you ready, girls? Yes. Kimberly, you ready? Yes, I am. Three, two, one, go. Yes, keep your back straight, strengthen your core, and go, row. You have to do 200 meters. Come on. Yeah, so the rowing challenge was something that I was really excited about because I have been doing CrossFit for eight months, and rowing is a big part of that. Um, it's something that I'm naturally good at. I like using my back and my upper body strength to do rowing, um, and it did come naturally to me. So that was uh, one part that I really enjoyed and I had fun with. Half the way, come on, go, full power. Okay, 52 seconds. Uh, my first challenge wasn't easy for me, but also I struggled a little bit with my upper yes, body strength. On, and go. it was, I knew for a fact that Kimberly was going to beat me in that one, and she did. So. Almost there, almost there. Last stand. Okay. Okay, girls, are you ready for the second challenge? Yes. <laughs> we'll, we'll do now squat till you drop, okay? What does it mean? You have to do squat till somebody drop. Okay. Okay? So squats will strengthen your legs, will st strengthen your glutes, and of course your core. Okay. And you'll increase your mobility. Are you ready to go? Yes. Okay, one, two, three, go. Perfect, go down, yes. So I'm 1-0 ahead now and I'm going to the squat challenge and I am terrified because squats is something that I love to do but I haven't done in so many months. Yes, go, go, go. 15 seconds. Um, so after I lost the first uh, rowing challenge, uh, I knew that upper body I'm, I'm always going to lose. 
so when it was time to do the squats, there were multiple reasons. First of all, I thought, I mean, this is slightly my stronger area, so I cannot give up on this. Plus, I'm already, you know, 1-0, zero. I'm zero, 35. so I have some catching up to do. So a combination go, go, of the go. two made me win the squats challenge. Come on, go, go. One and a half. Okay, you can go. <laughs> Good. <laughs> okay, ready girls? Yes. Third, third exercise. Plank to pain. Okay, we we'll start planking. We we'll work on the core muscles. Okay, you have to be straight. Your abs squeeze in. And you, you ready to go? Yes. Start. Oh gosh, the plank, it was so painful. I felt my entire body vibrating. I could feel it all the way, my arms to my shoulders to my spine for some reason. It was, I don't know how I lasted, but I didn't want to give up. And as they were counting me down, I was hoping Kimberly was going to lose, but no chance. And that kind of kept me going. Otherwise, if I was at the gym on a regular day, two minutes of a plank would be a lot for me, to be honest. Don't drop. Okay, 30 seconds. Come on, go. It was very challenging. To halfway through the event, I was shivering, my hands were shaking, my legs were shaking. I wanted to give up, but then it was just that whole competitive spirit that got me going. Three, two, one. Okay, drop. It's tired. Maybe for the battle ropes, I wish that I had gotten a bit slower so that I could last longer. I know that it's all about strategy at this point, but when you are at when you are at the at the field and when you have all the cameras pointing at you and you have that pressure to do well, you just don't think. So I ended up going really quick, um, but I did pretty okay. I'm pretty proud of it. 45 seconds is not bad. One, two, three, go. Uh, with the ropes, honestly, I started off okay, but I, I really slowed down towards the end of it. But ultimately, it's about who lasted the longest. So from that point of view, I guess I won that challenge. But it wasn't easy. My arms were in so much pain, especially this area over here. And uh, I just didn't want to give up and I was shaking and I thought I was going to pass out at some point. <laughs> but I just kept going because I didn't want to give up. I think that's where the real competitive spirit comes in. Okay, stop. 51. Okay, now we start with the push-up. Last exercise. We'll do three moves, three colors, blue, red, and green. Each color, five reps. The blue will be for your chest, uh, muscles. The red will be for shoulders, then triceps. Okay. It will be in time base, so you have to change the colors fast. Okay. And who will win is the fastest. Perfect. Okay, Good. ready to go? Yes. Yeah, let's go down. Take your position. One. Two, three, go. So I've never even seen a push-up apparatus before. I mean, what is that? I, you know, so I was really taken aback by it because again, upper body strength is not my best area. Okay, Kim, ready? Yes, 49 seconds to beat. Okay. Five reps each. Let's go. Take your position, one, two, three, go. Push-ups is definitely not my forte. I am really bad with my upper body, especially with my arms. Um, and I did not have that much hope that I would do well with my push-ups. But I think the whole thought behind my head that I was lagging behind really helped. And um, I just had to give it my 110%. Three, and I think it paid four, off. And done. 29 seconds, perfect. Oh, okay, mm. Wow, that was so exhausting, wasn't I it? I can't feel my legs, I swear, it's hurting. I can't feel most of my body, especially the ropes. Oh, I can't even do that motion anymore because my hands have officially given up on me. I thought they were going to fall off my shoulders. Yeah, How but you, you, did, you did so well with the squats. You were such a natural at it, but yeah. I'm Kimberly, so I, had, I had my you. reputation on the line. I couldn't <laughs> let you beat me. Uh, but you did really well. Thank so, you. Um, there's not going to be any beef between us. I'm using all food terminology yeah. over here. 
I mean, because <laughs> of, for obvious reasons. So there's yeah. no beef, no bad blood over here because our score is even. It's a tie. You won two challenges, <laughs> I won two challenges, and the third one was a tie. Yeah. So that way, you know, even Steven. Awesome. Yeah? I'm so happy and honestly, <laughs> You are my new favorite gym buddy. It oh, was so much you. fun working out with you. I did not feel exhausted. I did not feel like this was a task. Yeah. I had so much fun. So thank you so much. Before we started this challenge, I told you the proof will be in the pudding. So should we go get some Let's pudding? Let's go get some pudding. Let's I'm starving. That. Let's do that. Let's do that. <laughs> So if my skin could talk, it would tell me not to stress out too much, go easy on the makeup and just let me breathe. Now speaking of fitness and food with Kimberly has got me very hungry and also very thirsty. So I'm going to enjoy some of my Lacknow Cran Apple Ginger Juice right here. Mm. It is so delicious and so nutritious and good nutrition equals good health. So while I enjoy my drink, why don't you guys go check out our Celebrity Fitness Mantra. Hey guys, this is Priyank Sharma and you guys are watching Body and Mind Season 4. Talking about my workout Rajai, my favourite workout activity is dancing. So one thing I've really discovered when since I've been dancing is the fitness goes to another level. So it's not just you're doing something, your body is just not doing everything. It's a great balance between mental stability and your physical stability. So that combinations of handling, the mentality, the mental uh, you know, uh, stability and the physical stability, that's amazing. So being fit doesn't mean that, you know, having the best physique, no. It is all internal, it's what I feel personally. It's not how, how you look. No, there are so many pe people, they look massive. You know, they look, they have eight packs. But there are so many people who are skinny. But they're like, most, they have more strength and they're more quick. They're more agile. So ending up this entire conversation, I would like to say that uh, please, uh, you know, eat well sleep well, whatever you feel like eating, make sure you're eating, you're exercising also at the same time and yes, don't forget to dance. Time now for a quick break, guys. The next segment is my favorite, which is food. So I'm gonna be eating a lot, so stay tuned. Welcome back to Dove Presents Body and Mind Season 4. Japanese and Far East Asian cuisine always tantalizes my taste buds. And I will never pass up an opportunity to eat at an Asian restaurant because I absolutely love the Asian classics of wontons, dim sums, ramen, tempura. This is a health and wellness show, Ash. And that's exactly why today I'm at Kobea, where I will be sampling some Asian fusion dishes, but of course with a healthy twist. Alright guys, so today I'm at Middle East's first and possibly only gluten-free Far East Asian restaurant, Kobea. And to take me through this journey of gluten-free, delicious Pan-Asian food, I'm joined by the co-founder of the restaurant, Leiko. Hi Leiko. Hi, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. I love the Japanese hospitality, by the way. It's just wonderful. And I'm not just saying this because you're sat here in front of me. I love Japanese food and just Asian cuisine in general is one of my favorites. Um, so Kobea. Yes. Does it have anything to do with Kobe beef? Sorry to ask you the most obvious question. Yeah. <laughs> yes, uh, yes. Kobe beef is uh, one of the most famous beef in Japan, mm -hmm. maybe in the world. Yes. <laughs> uh, pe people were well known about Wagyu, yeah. but uh, Kobe beef is the highest grade of Wagyu. Okay. So Wagyu means Japanese beef, and the Kobe beef is the uh, uh, highest beef of uh, Japanese beef. When you think of Pan-Asian restaurants, um, I think of dim sum and whatnot, so it's hard to really remove the gluten part of it. But this is the first and only gluten-free 
uh, Far East Asian restaurant. How did that come about? Uh, actually, one of my son has yeah. a gluten intolerance issue. Oh my gosh. And then always we have to look for some restaurant for him. But however, my another son, eldest teenager son, always wants to have a burger mm. or something junky, heavy food. All the good stuff. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and uh, my daughter, daughters always want to vegetarian food with some wow. healthy things. You're joking. And we really struggle to find uh, you know, the restaurant which all of us can enjoy the food. Mm. So always looking for this kind of restaurant. Kids That's are so picky, aren't they? Yes, exactly. And I love what you've done when you realize that you couldn't find one yourself. Mm -hmm. You created one, you opened one yourself. I love a woman who takes matters into her own hands. Thank you. Very inspiring story. Now, tell me a little bit about the appetizer that I'm having over here. I think essentially a breakfast dish. So I'm having an eggs benedict with a mushroom trio. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, all of our food is not authentic Japanese food. Mm -hmm. Our food is, uh, you know, some food for it's fusion, food infusion, yeah. but uh, all of them are some element of uh, Asian style. Yeah. So, for example, this is um, uh, low carb egg benedict, which is uh, uh, no bread mm. or, and no carb, basically. I noticed that the base is not a, a bun, mm -hmm. it's eggplant. Yes, okay. eggplant. And, and there's no rich, creamy hollandaise sauce or anything. Yes. And yeah. also we use uh, uh, organic eggs mm -hmm. and then uh, many Japanese mushroom, three kind of Japanese mushrooms. Yeah, because mushroom. usually Eggs Benedict has either smoked salmon mm -hmm. or ham, but this one has mushrooms. What are the yes. three mushrooms in uh, it? Shiitake and enoki and then this one is shimeji. Oh, shiitake shimeji. is one of my favorite mushrooms and mm -hmm. one that I cook a lot at home myself. Mm -hmm. All right, now tell me about this salad dish over here because it has a very interesting ingredient which not many people would know about. Mm -hmm. Tell us about it. Yeah, this is called Gobo Detox Gobo Salad. Gobo. Yes, yeah. Now Gobo, for those of you watching at home, the English name of it would be burdock. Um, it is actually not just used in cooking, mm -hmm. but it is also it also has several medicinal properties to it. And this is what um, a raw uncooked one looks like. It's actually a root vegetable, right? Yes. Popularly used in Japanese cuisine. Mm -hmm. The Japanese name is Gobo, the English name is Bordok. Bordok Tell yes. me a little bit about the health benefits uh, of it. This one is contain a lot of fiber uh, and that's why it's very good for detox and then uh, good make and activate good func uh, function of kidney. Mm -hmm. All right, now moving from the salad to one of your signature dishes which has Kobe beef in it. Mm -hmm. So tell me about this. This kind of reminds me of a poke bowl. Yes, it's the donburi. It's like a poke bowl. Mm -hmm. It's uh, like some dishes on top of the rice. That is the donburi. So sukiyaki is one of a very authentic Japanese uh, beef dishes. Okay. Yes. And of course, our sukiyaki don is uh, uh, Kobe beef. Yeah. So this this has rice at the uh, the very bottom, yes. and on top of that, it has the what's it called again? Yes, it's uh, shirataki. Shirataki. So it pretty much looks like a rice noodle, but it's far from being a noodle. Tell us a little bit about this one. Uh, shirataki is made of yam, mm -hmm. yam starch, and then it's basically it, we can say uh, almost zero calorie. So of course it's good for the diet mm -hmm. and still keep tummy, you know, you can tummy make it full. Mm -hmm. And then it's... Uh, Zero calorie, that's very good, mm, yeah. Yes, so uh, you can cook with uh, as a salad or even you can cut with, uh, cut small pieces and then mix with uh, rice as well. And yep. the dressing is a, a sweet soy sauce? Yes, sweet okay. soy sauce. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> We've saved the best for last over here. Now this dessert, I've never seen anything like it before, but turns out it is a popular Japanese street food, correct? Mm -hmm. Tell us what it's called. Yeah, it's called kakigori. Kakigori. Yes. Now for Indian viewers watching at home, this would be our uh, kalakata meets a kulfi, so mm -hmm. it's, it's like, pretty much like an ice popsicle yes. with ice cream on it. So tell me, tell me a little bit about this dish. Yeah, uh, Kakigori is very, uh, you know, traditional dessert, but basically it's just ice. It's like eating snow, maybe. It is. I yeah. was just going to say, I feel like I'm eating snow. <laughs> yes. But so, it's not just 
tasteless like eating snow. Yeah. It's got a lot of flavor to it. Mm -hmm. Is that dates that I'm tasting? What is yeah. in it? Actually, kakigori is the Japanese traditional sweet, as mm -hmm. I said. So in Japan, we put many different kinds of syrup, like a strawberry syrup or even mm -hmm. matcha syrup on top. But uh, we create, uh, uh, you know, for someone who lives in here. So if this is, I we create a with uh, date syrup mm. and the pistachio. I love the yeah. flavor of dates. Yes. I love how you've put a Middle Eastern twist mm -hmm. to what is essentially mm -hmm. a traditional Japanese dessert. Yes, it's mm. like a collaboration of yeah. uh, Japan meets, Japan. meets uh, the Middle East. Yeah. <clears throat> Fascinating. It almost mm. looks like the Mount Fuji mm -hmm. itself, almost like an ice pyramid right yeah. here. Yeah. Leiko, mm -hmm. it's been an absolute pleasure. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for having me and spoiling me with all this delicious gluten-free food. And next time I want to purchase some Kobe beef, I have my supplier right here. Yes, and they course. also have some amazing detox teas and a lot of traditional Japanese ingredients which you definitely need to check out. Thank you so much for having me away. Thank you very much. Thank and you. And sayonara. Sayonara. <laughs> So to make sure that I stay gluten-free, Leiko has been kind enough to gift me this hamper which has all sorts of gluten-free rice, pasta and some delicious detox teas, very kind of her. So from detox tea to detox of the body, coming up after the break. Welcome back to Body and Mind Season 4. Now Switzerland is known for many things, chocolates, stunning views and of course the majestic Alps. Now I wish my show producers would fly me out to Switzerland so I can experience a bespoke treatment, but I'm not too sad because I'm at an equally stunning setting right here at the Four Seasons Dubai to experience a therapy entrenched in authentic Swiss elements. Let's check it out. with not one but two amazing treatments here at the Four Seasons and to tell us a little bit more about what the treatment entails and the benefits I'm joined by the senior spa director of Four Seasons Dubai Christelle. Hi Christelle. Hi Hash, how are you? I feel you amazing. Feel? You guys are amazing hosts by the way and such a stunning property. What I enjoyed particularly during my treatment and right now is the sound of fountains, the sound of water. It makes me want to sleep. It's such a great feeling. Right, Krista, tell me a little bit about the two treatments that I experienced today, starting with the salt scrub. Absolutely. So the two treatments that we experienced today are from Dr. Bergener. Mm -hmm. This is a partnership that we have a long time here at Four Seasons Jumeirah. And we just relaunched a new bespoke menu of treatments. So you had exactly the new uh, features of our spa. And you started with the uh, Swiss Soul Detox Scrub, yes. which is actually a body treatment. And you can add this body treatment to any of the facial of the body treatment from the spa menu here at Mira. And this is particularly emphasis on the scrubbing your skin with Swiss elements uh, from the Alps. So actually wow. the Swiss salts are coming from the Alps. Uh, in Spray the from land. the Alps onto yes. my skin. <laughs> and all the formulations of all the products from Dr. Bergener's are done in Switzerland, in Montreux actually. So the benefit of the Swiss uh, salts uh, is really the power of the, the mountain and all the ingredients that make your skin soft and silky at the end. Well, I may not have been to the Alps, but the Alps came to me today and my skin feels baby soft. I think my two-year-old daughter and I have the same texture skin as of now because of <laughs> how soft it feels. It was such a wonderful treatment. Thank now moving you. on from uh, the Swiss salt to the facial that I had, the pearl and gold facial. I mean, it, it's, it's so Dubai, isn't it? It sounds so <laughs> opulent and it was when I experienced it. Tell, tell us a little bit about it. Yes, actually the idea with Dr. Bergener was to create a special menu of bespoke facials and bespoke serums. 
So since we are in Dubai, you mentioned it, the history of the pearls, we wanted to pay tribute to the heritage of this uh, culture. Yes. And our spa is named the Pearl Spa. Mm. So we are really revisiting uh, uh, the pearl history right. with these facials. And today you had the gold restructuring pearl facial, which is comprising the use of the uh, bespoke pearl serum. And with Dr. Bergener, Dr. Pauline Bergener, actually, she is the one who is uh, formulating all these amazing products that are always exclusive to the properties. So they are in some four seasons around the world mm -hmm. and with us in Jumeirah since uh, the property opened. And then we are revisiting that serums. We have four serums that are bespoke to us, so you cannot find them anywhere else. Anywhere else. You need to come to see it here and to, uh, to experience the treatment with us. So you had the pearl, yes, uh, gold, yeah. working on the anti-aging, moisturizing your skin, re refining the contour of the face. It's either for ladies, either for gentlemen. Of course, for gentlemen, we will use then the cream that is really for their skin type. Yeah. But this serum is also for both genders. That, that's interesting, a bit of his and hers going on over there. That's fascinating. Would you say that this uh, treatment is for women and men of all age groups and all skin types? I would say usually when you are looking for gold facial, it is that you already have a uh, skin that is not, you know, a skin from the 20s, yeah. not a skin for the 30s. So I would say, depending where you are living as well, you also have the environmental factor that is really onto your skin. So you benefit to like between 30 and 50 plus, you can have this uh, gold facial, but your therapist will assess your needs directly in the treatment Absolutely. room. Absolutely, my therapist was fabulous, by the way. She did such a great job. Um, Christelle, it's been an absolute pleasure. I can't wait to come back and try some more of the treatments that you have Thank here you. on offer at the Paul Spa. Thank, Thank you, you so do. much. Thank you so much. I think I've been pampered enough, in fact, more than enough, for what one adult woman needs in a day. So I'm gonna head home and prepare for our next adventure and there's so much more to come. So until next time, see you guys.